Good morning, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. It is a beautiful morning here in South Carolina, and um, I was inside listening to um, 2 Peter and 1 John chapter 1, 2, and 3, and the word was just so beautiful and so timely and relevant and was ministering to me at where I am in this season. And of course, you guys are continually in my heart and thoughts, so I'm like, I've got to share this with my brothers and sisters because um, ultimately when we dwell in Him, Christ our Lord and Savior, our Father, and we have the indwelling Holy Spirit within us, you know, we're going to have that natural love and concern for our brothers and sisters um, in the body of Christ. And even for those that are not in the body of Christ, we're going to have a godly love and concern and we want the best, you know, for everybody, because that's just the love of God, and God is love, and if there's no love and concerns and, um, you know, prayers and desires for the well-being of others, then I do not believe the Spirit of God um, dwells in us, because God is love, and love always you know, put others first and, um, and love reaches out to others that are in need. And I have been blessed by your love, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. Those of you, like I've mentioned in many of my videos before, you reach out to me, you lift me up, you pray for me, you intercede for me, and, um, you call me, you email me, text me, and, um, because we have fellowship with Him, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. So I was listening to um, 2 Peter, and like I said, 1 John 1, 2, and 3, and just a few scriptures. Well, they're all beautiful, they're all relevant, they're all powerful, and we need every word of God that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But I wanted to share a few um, highlights that's pertaining to this season Um I just smushed an, a bug. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Probably a little, little tiny <laughs> spider or something. I don't know what it was, but it's dead. <laughs> ah, mean Asian woman. <laughs> anyways, let me get back to what I was going to share. <laughs> but anyways, I'm out here enjoying my second half cup of coffee. It is organic simple truth organic coffee from Kroger's <laughs> that my beloved brother in the Lord um, uh, recommended so I went and got some and it's absolutely delicious and then my brother and sister in Christ Kim and Tony gave me four awesome mugs and this is one of my favorite I have never seen um, ASAP um, shown in this way so now when I hear the term ASAP or see it immediately I think about this always say a prayer and how important is that for us to always say a prayer for ourselves our family our friends um, and even those that are our enemies who persecute us mock us scorn us you know always say a prayer if we continually live by this ASAP rule we will never cease to stop praying for somebody about something, amen? And that's what being in a relationship, in intimate fellowship with the Lord, our God, our Creator is all about, is um, just to um, continually offer up prayers and thanksgivings and supplications and petition to Him in a continual uh, conversation, you know, intimate conversation, uh, just releasing everything um, in our hearts and thoughts to Him, because he knows it all anyways, and he cares about every aspect of our lives. And he wants to help us. He wants to bless us, not to take anything away from us. So let me stop rambling and go to the word that I wanted to share. Um, I want to start off with um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Amen. So I love you guys, so that's why I'm going to share 
a few of these beautiful scriptures that I believe is pertaining relevant to our lives and our season of testings and trials today, especially mine. I feel free these past um, two, three days. I feel like the Lord has um, set me free from the um, dominion of darkness, um, the power of demonic influences and control in the area of um, lustful desires for the flesh and not the things of God. I could feel and see and sense that my heart was um, wandering and slipping away from the lover of my heart and soul, desiring other things than just true intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ, the lover of my heart and soul, my first love. And I could sense, and I even sense the oppression and the um, the control. Um, I knew and sensed that I was falling into the pits and the traps and the snares of the devil, but I was too weak to um, deliver myself out of it. So the only thing that I knew to do was, although in my, you know, weakness and um, temptations, I would still have the strength and um, I don't know what you want to call it, but to just get on my knees and cry out to God, you know, God help me, deliver me, deliver me from myself, deliver me from every plot, plan, snares, traps of the enemy that he has set for me because I am too weak. My enemies are too strong for me. They are overcoming me. And yet um, I knew that in Christ, you know, we who are born again with the Spirit of God living inside of us, we are overcomers. But yet at that moment of uh, weaknesses and temptations, um, I did not feel like an overcomer. I felt like I was under the yoke of um, slavery, the yoke of bondage and oppression, um, under this very uh, strong um, power um, that I could not break free easily, nor did I want to break free from it, uh, if, you know, truth be known. Um, but I knew that it didn't line up with the will of God, the heart of God, and I knew that I could not exist apart from the Spirit of God, the presence of God, the fellowship of God. So I had to drop to my knees many of those days in my time of, um, you know, weaknesses and temptations. And so, I thank God that I have you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. There are some of you that are watching me right now that are faithfully lifting me up and um, interceding on behalf of my soul. And I am also interceding on behalf of yours. And this is what we are called to do, to intercede, lift each other up and carry each other burden and not condemning and judging one another because we all have weaknesses i don't care who you are and if you do not think you have any weaknesses then i'm gonna call you what the word of god calls you a liar and i'll share that scripture with you in just a minute as well because every one of us have weaknesses temptations trials and we fail we stumble we do not always overcome Every single moment of our walk with God, we do not always overcome. We do stumble. We do fumble. But we have to confess our sins one to another and especially to our high priest, Jesus Christ. Amen. We confess our sins. We renounce it. We turn from our evil ways and we pursue God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strength, with all of our soul. We pursue God. We love him. And we do not want to do anything to grieve him. And there is a price to pay for <clears throat> pursuing the lust of the flesh. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But let's go straight to um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So if we have been born of God, the Holy Spirit of God have, has come to dwell in our hearts, live in us, his temple. We are the temple of the living God. We are the body of Christ. Um, and he is residing in our hearts as Lord of our lives. Then we have power. 
the same power that raised Christ from the dead, we have that same power living inside of us to overcome all sins and temptations that the devil sends our ways. That's what the Word of God promised, and it's true. And we just have um, to believe that and walk in our authority. But you know what? We can't walk in our authority we, um, as children of God until we submit first to God. Resist the devil and then he will flee if we do not submit to the word of God first and abide in his word and do his commandment out of the love in our hearts for him. We have no power to resist the devil. And that's why Hebrew says, is it James? I think it's James. Um, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. So power comes through obedience, through submission to God first. Now I'm going to go to Second Peter um, chapter 2. Oh, where is it? I had it marked. Here it is. Okay. Now, for the last three days, I feel liberated. I feel like I've been, you know, set free from this um, power of oppression uh, that's trying to keep me in bondage to um, my sins, my weaknesses and temptations. Um, but I confess to the Lord, I cried out to God, and He has healed my heart. And so I feel free. And um, during the time when I didn't feel free, um, I did not have the um, confidence to go to the throne of God and just petition whatever my little heart desires that is according to his will. I'm not talking about, you know, Lord, let me win the lottery or, you know, dumb things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, presenting my petitions, my prayers to the Lord that I know is in line with the word and will of God. And um, it's when we pray the word of God, the will of God, that he gives us the desires of our hearts. And so I did not have the confidence because I knew that my conscience was not clean and clear before the Almighty. So I had to uh, confess and renounce my sin and turn from my evil ways. And then when that took place, the Holy Spirit comes in and cleanses me, restores me, restores my soul and heal my heart so that I could walk in the light as he is in the light so i'm going to go to first um, john chapter 3 verse 21 um through 24 beloved if our heart condemn us not then have we confidence toward god and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. The greatest commandment of all is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, love God with all of our hearts, mind, body, soul, and strength, and for us to love one another. And this is my act of love um, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. For you guys that are watching, I love you guys. Um, and um the spring of 2004, the Lord came to me in a dream right after I had returned from my first mission trip to Cambodia, my, my birthland. The Lord came to me in a dream and he told me, you know, tell my people I'm coming. And, um, and I argued with the Lord in the dream. I said, no, no, Lord, you can't come now. We're not ready. I'm not ready. I just started serving you. You know, we just began Legacy of Hope International, uh, which is um, a nonprofit organization that uh, serves um, my people in Cambodia. Um, you know, the poor village um, children and people that need um, education, um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so we had just began um, that ministry that the Lord has put in our hearts. When I say we, I mean my former husband and I. And the Lord gave us that name, Legacy of Hope International. He gave that to me. And um, so that's what we called it. And it still goes on to uh, this day, even though I'm not a part of it um, anymore. But so I was arguing with the Lord in my dream. No, Lord, you can't come now. My family's not saved. I just began 
you know, serving you. You can't come now. Can you imagine the audacity, the arrogance, the ignorance of telling God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the savior of mankind, the maker of all things, the king of heaven and earth, amen, telling him, no, you can't do that. You can't come now. It's not time. How arrogant. But um, I was young in the Lord, guys. I was young, dumb, <laughs> presumptuous, and um, lack a lot of wisdom, did not know God too well. I was new in the Lord. I was born again for about five years. But um, one of those five years, I was running from God back into rebellion and sin. So really, I was um, pretty, you know, a babe in Christ. So he repeated himself again. He's like, tell my people I'm coming. And um, so that is my heart. That is my calling is to call the people of God, you know, to come um, to the Lord, to prepare the ways of the Lord, to prepare ourselves for our soon coming King. That is my calling. That's my passion. That's my heart. That's my desire. That's why I make these videos because it is what God has called me to do to compel others to Him, to taste and see that the Lord is good, to prepare our temples and make it ready uh, for the King of Glory because He is returning soon. And so this is why I am. I felt compelled to share the Word of God with you today. So let me uh, keep going before it becomes 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Oh, the birds are so beautiful. As he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. In him, our Lord, our Savior, our God, our maker. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And he in him. God dwells in us when we keep his commandments. The Holy Spirit of God does not dwell in temples that are rebellious and disobedient, a temple of idols, um, idolatry, of sin. We have to flee from evil. We have to sanctify ourselves. The Word of God sanctifies us. So if we are reading the Word of God and we are living and abiding in the Word of God, the Word of God sanctifies us, His temple. We were purchased for him and we were created by him and redeemed by his blood for him amen so that god lives in our temples and he only lives in temples that are obedient to his will to his spirit the sons of god are led by the spirit of god and that's romans 8 19 amen and he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Amen. God has given us his Holy Spirit to dwell in us if we keep his commandments, abide in his word, and do his word. And now, and that's what the uh, Psalm 91 promises um, is all about. It is... For those who abide in the word of God, do the will of God. That's what the protection provision of Psalm 91, the promises of God, is all about. It is not for anyone that just say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And don't do his will and do not, you know, believing in God. There's fruits of um, faith, you know, faith without works is dead. So if we truly believe in God, you know, there will be fruits of obedience, fruits of repentance, fruits of um, good works that brings him glory and honor you know, to the Father, a 30, 60, 100 percent fold um, according to the word of God. And we are saved by grace, yes, but for zealous good works. To serve our living God. To bring Him honor and glory. Amen. So let me share with you the consequences of not living according to the Spirit of God. Abiding in His Word and doing His will. But pursuing the lust of the flesh as I was tempted to do this past week. There are consequences and I know that the word of God is not fully preached 
in churches. There are a good handful of pastors, preachers of righteousness like Noah, like according to um, um, Second Peter that I'm about to read with you. But for the most part, you know, churches today are not preaching righteousness. Um, they're preaching this cheap grace. You know, all you have to do is uh, say that you believe in um, Jesus, the Son of God, which the demons believe and tremble and they fear and they tremble, but they don't obey him. So therefore, salvations are not for the devils and his demons. Salvations are for those who believe and obey the will of God, according to Hebrews, I think, is it 5, 9? I'll have to check that out. Um, later and confirm that. So here are the consequences of pursuing our own lustful uh, desires, the things of the world, the lust of the world. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 through 10. Okay. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. How many preacher of righteousness are there in the pulpits today? Think about that one. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that are after should live ungodly. God is about to do that again. The Bible says that the world in its present age, this present world is reserved for fire um, for the ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelleth among them, in seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Thank you, Lord. He surely does, because I did not know how to deliver myself out of ungodly temptations. I was weak. I was falling. I was stumbling and fumbling, but God is faithful. He knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. All we have to do is humble ourselves, you know, drop to our knees, humble our hearts and ask God to forgive us and he will forgive us. And, you know, Isaiah says that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise as eagles. Amen. So that's all we have to do is humble ourselves and ask God to forgive us and he will strengthen us. He will cleanse us and heal our hearts. And so, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, especially despising the word of God, the oracles of God, um, you know, the commandments of God. Presumptuous are they self-willed. We've got a lot of self-willed in us many times um, in our churches today. There's a lot of self-willed, you know, they don't want to hear what the word of God have to say because they are their own gods and they're going to do what they want to do. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities and they make fun of people who pursues after righteousness. <laughs> now, verse 12, I'm going to jump to verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices cursed children which have forsaken the right way when we forsake the ways of the lord we curse ourselves and we also curse our children so this is why it's imperative that we abide in the word of god do his commandments so that the blessings of god will fall upon us and upon our children and grand grandchildren. Amen. 
So let me read that again. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, Bosor who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And what's the wages of unrighteousness? The judgment of God, the fire of God, the, the you know, hell, damnation um, for those who should choose to live ungodly lives pursuing the lust of their flesh. So that is the wages of unrighteousness. But God did not come to this earth, gave up his life, shed his blood so that we are bound to sin hell and damnation no for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life john 3 16 and just like first john why did i close this already you know first john oh i love this where is it he says that if we confess our sins okay here we go 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 through 10, I'll end with this. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Can you imagine calling a holy God perfect, flawless, righteous, in all of his ways, calling him a liar. Can you imagine that? Well, according to the word of God, when we do not confess our sins and, you know, when we say, I haven't sinned, but we actually have sinned um, in the eyes of the Lord, according to the word of God, then we call him a liar. We make him a liar. I posted something on Facebook a few days ago. It says uh, something about... Um, you know, there is no salvation apart from faith and repentance. And a Christian with anger, like haughtiness, arrogance, anger, posted, repent for what? And then he kept on posting something else. I didn't even respond because ah, there's so much to say, but um, I'm not going to go there. There should be no anger to the word and truth of God. If we have the Holy Spirit of God in us, there will be humility and meekness, and we will hear the word of truth. Amen? But um, there's many so-called Christians that get very angry if you mention the word repentance, and they will challenge you, you know, that, you know, we were saved by grace. Jesus paid the price for our sins, you know, past, present, future. Um, so they get really angry. You know, grace is not a license to continue sitting. Grace is the empowering gift of God for us to live free from sin and to serve the living God, to declare his forgiveness, mercy, and power in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, for what he, Jesus Christ has done on the cross, because he rose again, you know, we too can rise in the power of grace to overcome all things, amen, in this world, because greater is he who lives in us than he that lives in the world. Well, this is all I have. I love you guys. God bless you. Have a blessed day, and I will talk to you soon. Live by the Spirit. Be led of the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of our flesh. Amen. God bless you. I love you all.